Women's Veterinary Information Day is kind of a one-stop shop. We try and fit as many service providers and inspiration under one roof as we can. It was founded in 2008 so that we could inform parents and families and individuals on services available locally. Peter Osborne, who's the founder, he still checks every single book before it gets published. And his um, rule is that every single book must appeal to every single child. They've got to have that pick me up and eat me element. So they have a high ratio of pictures to words. The words, the information is always in small chunks. You will never find a big page of writing. And you have lots of other things that interact in with them. So for example, we have puzzle books, um, which have questions on each page to help you go along. They have um, stickers to reward you when you've worked it all out. And all sorts of different things to make the books appealing to children. Um, well, one of my friends, when I first started doing this, she had four dyslexic children. And she came back to me and was saying, wow, these, these puzzle books are great because my children can do them at the right peer level. Um, so they didn't feel that they were reading books that were younger for them. They could do books that their friends were reading at the same time and join in. So Osborne are very good at doing things like that. It has grown. We started off at Ketley Community Centre with um, a few exhibitors, Parent Partnership, for example, who are now Information Advice Support Service. And... Um, lots of support for friends and family and it's then grown to lots of local businesses coming as inspiration really. It's, it's having people as role models. My name is Sarah Heath and I'm an Asperger's specialist consultant and I also run a self-help group called Autonomy and the two work together to support each other. There's often a link between dyslexia and Asperger's syndrome. And often a child will be picked up with a difficulty in reading or writing or socialising with other children. And then people will start to think, why might that be? Um, I primarily work with adults, although I do work with children, and our group is an adult group. But then children with autism and, and dyslexia grow up into adults with autism and dyslexia. So uh, the, the supporting of people to understand themselves and their Asperger's. Um, understanding uh, the difficulties that they're going to face, helping their families come to terms with their difficulties, um, mentoring them along the way, coaching them, um, just giving them understanding that their autism isn't something that is going to hold them back, but it's actually going to give them fuel in the future. I'm David Graham. I work for Young Enterprise in Shropshire. I'm the area manager, so I look after all the business advisors and schools and students. Uh, we're exhibiting here today because a lot of our students are dyslexic and I'm here to show them that they can actually get uh, work ready skills and learn about business the same as all of the students and they have no disadvantage whatsoever. Well, we show them that it's all about their personal skills, how they develop as individuals and how they can work with people, relating to people, understanding business, finance and working as a team in particular because most students will go and work for an organisation where they're working with other people. Well, this is my son Joe who runs his own small business, he also volunteers for Young Enterprise. Well, I volunteer for Young Enterprise and I also have my own wood turning small business. Um, I'm dyslexic myself. Um, so I was statemented through school, I had a reader and writer for my exams, all that sort of thing. Um, so I'm just showing that you might struggle with reading and writing and sometimes you might take a little bit longer to process things. You can still run your own business and you can still create little projects and, and do something different. You know, don't have to be in the office like everybody else. What would turn is basically you have a, a lathe and then you'll either have a log that you'll cut into a blank and then you turn that into something like a bowl or maybe even a, a tree and that then is a nice little decorative item you've got bowls you're using for um, your small slices of bread or fruit or sweets or anything like that um, that you want to display uh, I, when i started my business in 2007 i ended up for the first year spending probably a day a week giving away free advice and guidance on the phone to families and individuals and realized that everybody was still struggling to find information as we were as a family so or as we had done so i decided to put on an event where we could equip people with advice guidance and information it's like you said you can remember certain numbers yeah they will remember certain numbers, numbers. so yeah. i remember seven seven is my favorite one, one. 
Yeah. I had to remember that one because the yeah. ones that the teacher persecuted me with. Yeah. And then, yeah, so I had to learn it. So it's and then I can work my way around them. So I know five cents is thirty-five because that's half of seventy. So again, I learned to double. Right. So again, on the grid here, when it's written this way, you can see how these numbers half themselves. So five is half of ten. Yeah. So 15 is half of 30. Mm. So what you're learning again is you're Just learning how to halve yeah. numbers. Probably without realising. Without realising, yeah. If you think about it too much, that's when it all goes Yeah, if you think too much, it all goes wrong. Oh, yeah. It all goes very pear-shaped. So if you just relax and then stop not liking it, that's it. Really that's it. So here we go, classic 42 there. That's what I'm saying. So we're going to move 42, goes to here. And you want, it's the same numbers, so we're going to put that one there. And that is the mistake that I used to do. So you just, you're able to move it round. Yeah. And that's it. Now this was my particular favourite, that was a Toblerone. Mm. That's my most expensive resource on the <laughs> yeah. table at the moment. <laughs> okay. Basically, so, really well. <laughs> so what you do is, you write the information on. So because they have like two weeks, at school now when they do the study of each subject, like yeah. literally how much time they have. Yeah. So the teachers are literally yeah, running at speed to try and keep up. And for people like me who take so much longer to learn anything, and all my boys, yeah. we had these at home, so they could come home, they were doing shapes, 3D shapes, and they would literally we'd just get them out. At school we're doing shapes. Are you? So exactly, so you probably know that that's sort of a triangle. That's a triangle. It's got three sides. Yes, brilliant, you see. Well, we have Penny travels up from London with multiplication rules. We have text help come over from Ireland every now and then. Sinclair's have come up from London. We just have people travel from all over and our local people are just brilliant. They get behind it 100%. Sinclair's Law is a law firm which cases for a lot of issues, but what we specialise in is education law, mainly to do with disability. We specialise in helping particularly kids get the right special educational provision in school. And that's why we're so keen to be associated with events like this one, because we want to empower parents to achieve the best for their children. And what, is, what we find terribly frustrating is that sometimes parents have an inkling that something is wrong, and that the local authority takes far too long to get the right provision in place. And it can mean that children are locked out of achieving their potential. And local authorities are regrettably, in some cases, taking a cost-benefit analysis when they really should be looking at the, purely at the needs of the child, which is what the law states. Well, we have an interactive website, um, which, uh, which is very, very useful, www.sinclairslaw.co.uk, which we put a lot of articles in and, and put a lot of effort to try and give parents as much information as possible. You can also always give us a call on 0208 891 4488. And I'll be happy to talk to any parent who's got any issues and, and see if we can find some sort of solution for them. The intention is to empower people and to make them feel good about themselves. And then when you read through the feedback, it's wonderful to see that that's what's happened. We spend the night before or a couple of days before wondering what on earth we're doing, who we think we are putting on such an event. And then you read the feedback within the first half an hour and realise it's still needed. It's really good to do. And and we'll keep doing it as long as I can afford to and as long as it's needed. Dyslexia Information Day aims to be a one-stop shop offering free dyslexic advice, guidance and information for all age ranges. We aim to inspire and empower our visitors of all ages, families, children and grown-ups too. To celebrate Dyslexia in Shropshire, we have launched the Dyslexia Awards. By celebrating local dyslexic skills and talents, as well as promoting hard work and excellent services locally, we intend to raise the positive profile and the side of dyslexia that people often don't get to see. Our ethos is dyslexia positively unique. You can get more information and nominate people worthy of an award at www.thedc dot org dot uk forward slash dyslexia awards or search at dyslexia awards on twitter or go to facebook dyslexia awards